On today's video, I'm going to show you how you can take an old, worn-out magneto like this and turn it into a distributor. This is the candidate for today's video. This is a Wyco Model C magneto that I purchased. Um, I just bought this on eBay a while ago. Um, it was cheap, and I thought, hey, that's a that should be something fun to goof around with. Maybe I can rebuild it. But as I disassembled it, I found out that this thing is probably the most rusted piece of junk I have ever seen in my entire life. I don't know where this was uh, being stored when I picked it up, but it looks like it was on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Anyway, so I'm going to tear this thing apart, and I'm going to try. Um, I've already started taking it apart a little bit. I've got the some of the impulse stuff on the back taken apart, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to pound out this... Uh, this rotor and then once I have the rotor I should be this the plan is to try to make a, a distributor out of this let me show you this so in reality all we need for a distributor is some points um, a spinning rotor that's timed to the engine and a coil well I've got a coil up here with some of my old parts this is a coil that that uh, goes with this distributor it goes I got that off of a John Deere 60? 60, yeah? Yeah, 60. No, that's off of my dad's Model G. Anyway, um, so I've got that coil, and I'm gonna buy, I'm just gonna go ahead and buy a capacitor, and I'm gonna see if I can, after freeing this uh, rotor up here inside of that magneto, if I can, I'll just drill a hole in the case here. I'll pop this, that coil out, because we don't need that coil, and, uh, I'll see if I can convert this over to a distributor. That was not easy to get that thing pulled apart. There's so much rust in there, I had to heat it. Typically you wouldn't want to heat something because, or typically you wouldn't want to heat a magneto just because you'll kill all of the magnetism down inside of your rotor. But in this case, since I'm switching it over, well, I'm trying to switch it over to a distributor, it doesn't really matter. So now I'm just gonna get it cleaned up a little bit more. Um, check out all the amount of corrosion and garbage that poured out of the back of that. It was just not clean. Not clean at all. That was not easy, but I now have a freely spinning rotor. And we can continue down the road of converting this over, while well, trying to convert this over into a distributor. I was able to get the impulse mechanism all put back together. However, since I didn't put those weighted dogs in, it doesn't actually engage the impulse. The impulse is still there. I put the spring in there, so I mean it still snaps, or it still you know springs back into place, but since those dogs aren't installed, at this point it's just a, a spinning, freely spinning drive shaft. Um, so I've now got this magneto housing and uh, and shaft assembly down to the point where where I want where I want to begin converting it to a to a distributor. What I need to, to have in a distributor, just so you're aware, so this is just a Delco Remy distributor um, that uh, that I pulled off of a Model G. You'll find these on your later model later letter letter model tractors or your early uh, number model tractors, but we don't have. Um, we do have on this, we, we do have the advanced mechanism, like I mentioned. On this, we're not going to have an, an advanced mechanism, but I'm okay with that. I'm just trying to see if I can make a simple uh, uh, distributor out of, out of this old junky magneto. So this is, uh, there is that advanced mechanism down there. You can, you can watch that video, like I said. But uh, all we have in a distributor is we have a powered cable coming in from the battery that comes in to that comes into the distributor and connects to our condenser and to our points. We don't need to rely on the magnets and the uh, and the coil that are inside of a, a, a magneto to generate the spark because we have the battery power. So since we have the battery power, we can use that. So I'm going to duplicate that same setup here with this uh, magneto housing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drill a hole right here in this little recessed boss area or whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to run that 
uh, cable into here and up into the housing since this is a Model C Magneto. Oh, this is the old one. I was going, this is the, this is the cap that came on this, on this old junky uh, Magneto. And I was planning on using this one, just getting by. However, when I, when, when I disassembled it and took everything apart, um, everything broke, everything snapped off. All of these bolts broke off these, uh, these fasteners that hold the capacitor in place. They broke off. I can't even get this, this screw out. So this cap is pretty much, you know, and it's got a big crack in it. So this cap is pretty much good for nothing. It's junk. I do, however, have this cap off of uh, a different uh, Wyco C Magneto that I had and I rebuilt. It was cracked uh, pretty badly through here, so I came in here with some uh, epoxy and and glued that crack that crack back together. So it's um, it's watertight and it's perfectly functional at this point. Um, it's not the prettiest repair job, but uh, but but it should work for this case especially. Anyway, pop that off. If you look down in here, I'm going to run that uh, that that battery cable in through the side of the, the magneto housing and up into here and I'm going to connect it to the capacitor here. I'm not going to use this capacitor. This capacitor is for a magneto. Uh, the rating for this capacitor is, is less than what um, a distributor capacitor is. I believe this capacitor is rated around 20 or 22 microfarads. The capacitor for a distributor I think is more like, oh what was it off the top of my head I think it was like around 30 microfarads. So um, I'm going to pull this uh, this lower rated capacitor out and I'm going to throw in um, um, the capacitor from this distributor and connect everything up. We're still going to use the same points. We're going to have to set the points to a higher value, uh, but that'll be fine. And then we can re reassemble everything and at that point this old magneto is converted in theory to a capacitor excuse me to a distributor and we can then at that point throw it on my tester and see if it works everything is wired up I have the hole drilled right here um, running the power cable from the battery in connecting it to the points and the condenser the condenser right here I had to do a little bit of modifying to fit everything in there but um, everything fits okay and now I'll just put the cap back on and uh, mount it in my tester and see if it works. Oh, I also re-gapped re the points to about 22 thousandths. Um, so they're a little bit wider than what they would be on uh, on this as a, if it was running as a magneto, they're only at about 15 thousandths. So re re up the points as well. So let's go ahead and re, uh, re put the cap back on and mount it in the tester. So I just put this quote unquote distributor on my tester and it did not work. I didn't get anything, not even a hint of a spark. Um, and I think, I, I'm not gonna give up. I think what the, the issue might be is that this, uh, this little plate where I have my points and my condenser mounted, that is all insulated from the rest of the housing and from um, everything. So. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a piece of wire. This was a hole that didn't break off the fastener in it, but this is what held the old coil into this housing when it was back when I had it, when it was still set up to be a magneto. And so I'm going to connect there and I thought, okay, I need now I just need a piece of conductive wire. And I thought, hey, this, uh, here's the old coil that's shot. I mean, it's, it's fallen apart. And so I thought, hey, well, what I'll do is I will just rob, rob this off here. So I cut this piece of uh, wire off of here. And then we'll sh let me show you something. This looks like it is, here, set this out of the way. So this piece of wire just looks like it's a bare piece of copper wire. Let me show you though. So I've got my, um, I've got my multimeter set up just to check for continuity. So you'll hear beep anytime there's um, anytime there's an electrical connection. See? So, if I put this here, now if this was a bare piece of copper wire, if I touch it here, you would hear a beep. Nothing. 
and it's because they coat the outside of these wires just with like a clear varnish that's an insulator. And that's why you can wrap it up around itself when it's in this coil and it doesn't just ground everything out. So if I want to use this, I have to just use a piece of sandpaper and just clean off the outside here so that then I have electric connection. I've got that wire connected back in there. I just ran it back up around. Now it's grounding out this plate right here. If you can see that. It's grounding everything out. So now, this is correct. I think this is more correct. Um, now, I've got, um, I've got an, um, an electrical connection between the frame and this base plate. So if I touch it right here, watch. So now that grounds out. Um, it used to not. And with the points open, so you can see, I don't know if you can see right there. The points are open. I had to reset those points. That, that's actually a point. Why I don't like the, one thing that I don't like about a Wyco C Magneto is basically every time you take this, this um, larger cover off, you always want to recheck your points because your points, when you, when you take this off, you're, um, you're taking off the, the points. And then when you put the cap back on, you're putting the cap back on, but it may not be situated exactly correctly. And so how this, um, this little uh, rocker arm rides on the lobe of that cam is going to be different, so that's going to change your points. So just be aware, um, if you have a Wyco C Magneto, whenever you take this, cap, this outer cap off and put it back on, check your points, okay? Um, so anyway, so I put this cap back on, now ground it out, the points are reset. So the cap with the points open, there's no, no connection between, you know, this terminal right here, the, the upper piece of the points and the frame. But when those points are closed, like they are now, so there's a connection there, connection there, connection there. Now if I open them back up again, you'll see now they're open. And now, nothing. Still have a ground here. Nothing here. I have on this side, but not on this side. So anyway, so I think I fixed that problem. I'm going to throw it back on the tester, and I hope this time we have spark. So I've got the distributor mounted up in the magneto tester. I've got it hooked up, um, running my from my positive here into the positive side of my coil, um, out the negative side of my coil. This is what I'm going to be touching this. This end of this is what connects down to the uh, to the uh, condenser and the points inside of here, and I'm just going to be touching this here. That's basically what your key does. You know, just makes that electrical connection. So that's how I'm going to be turning the spark on, and uh, we should see spark here. I think I've got it hooked up to these middle two terminals of my spark gap. So let's give this a go. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Bingo. Check it out. So that's really good. I got spark right here and right here. I have just converted this old uh, magneto into a distributor. That works really good. Really good spark. Now, I will say, I'm not going to install this on a tractor. This was purely for my own entertainment to see if I could do it, and I did. So this magneto housing was junk, and so just uh, tried it out, and it can be done. I think in a pinch, I mean, if you wanted to put a distributor on your tractor and you didn't want to buy, you know, you didn't want to buy one of these, whoops, sorry. If you didn't want to buy one of these, yeah, this can be done. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's probably a little bit long and boring for a lot of people, but for people who enjoy uh, old antique ignition systems like I do, this is pretty fun. Hey, thanks for watching.